Welcome to the Road Dog Project. This is Don Muskies and my canine co-host, Leon. Thanks to celebrity coaches, we're hitting the road and talking to the pros that make concerts and live events happen. If you'd like to support the channel, we'd appreciate a big thumbs up, and please enjoy the episode. Today our guest is a musician extraordinaire. From studio session player to international touring bassist and certified rock royalty. He spent his early days recording in the New York studios, including the infamous Power Station. Recording with names like Gladys Knight, Michael Bolton, Willie Nelson, Ringo Starr, and Alice Cooper. In 1982, he recorded with the then unknown Jersey Kid named John Bon Jovi. Since then, he has recorded on nearly every Bon Jovi release and has been touring with the band since 1994. Fast forward to April of 2018, this gentleman, along with the rest of Bon Jovi, was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. He now calls Nashville his home. Originally from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, he is Hugh McDonald. Hello. Hey. Hugh, we're honored to have you take a ride with us. It's Hey, this is a good day for a ride. Oh, it's nice. Very nice out here today. Uh, take me for a ride. Yeah, man. So... When was the last time you were on a bus? <laughs> I can't. Well, you probably play fly a lot. Yeah. When you're touring. Yeah, they, they, the band usually, or John usually leases yeah. a plane. He's smart enough to not have bought one. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But they're, yeah, we're, we usually fly private, at least from, you know, the Jersey area. Yeah. Because you know, I mean, when I was living there, we would take. John was yeah. literally down the street, so. Yeah. Drive to the heliport and take the helicopter to the airport, and so. But those days are over. So now it's flying like normal people yeah. to wherever the uh, wherever the plane is. Yeah. But your bus experience was good. I mean, you. I have no problem with. Bu uh, I was young. <laughs> every bone didn't hurt in my body. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was great. I just I, I learned to find the bottom bunk. Oh, okay. Where is the coldest? Okay, that's your preferred bunk? Because there's no heat in there. And, uh, you know, just yeah. strap myself in and sleep yeah. hours and hours and hours. I like I like a cold bunk. I like a cold hallway. Dark. Yep. Cold. I'm going to hit you hard. I'm going to hit you hard with some questions. Yeah. Where do you get your Philly cheesesteak? <laughs> Where do I get it? <laughs> now, uh, I either go to Jersey Mike's. <laughs> which I'm a huge fan of Jersey Mike's. Oh, okay. And there's a place that, that just down the street from where I live, a little place that has cheese steaks also, and they're really good. Oh, okay. Okay. So. All right. Well, we're going to talk about food later, and you can tell me about when we when you go back up north. Um, all right. So since you moved to Nashville late 2019, correct? That's what, that's what I've been told. <laughs> so <laughs> since then, we've had uh, a devastating tornado. We've had a pandemic, we've had riots, and we've had a bombing. Maybe I should have stayed where I was. <laughs> I was going to say, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, it, yeah, I haven't been able to get around much since moving here. Right, I was going to say, since you've been here, it's been kind of uh, a, little, a little nuts. Well, listen, you have a, a, a lengthy, uh, legendary history. Uh, I know you've gotten to tell your story a little bit. I want to kind of go through some of those things that not everybody knows and some of the things that maybe some people do and some things that I might not even yeah, remember yeah. <laughs> which is probably most of them okay uh, but I want to ask you before that what do you think you might would have done if you hadn't uh, been a musician Wow um, was there, I, there was or, never anything yeah never everything no there was really never anything else on my agenda once 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 I saw the Beatles and Ed Sullivan, that was it. Yeah. And before that, I, you know, was too young to even think about. Gee, I wonder what I'll do. Yeah. So was there uh, in your family? Was there any influ musical influences? Nobody else in your family played instruments. No. Sang, nobody sang. No. So TV, Ed Sullivan, the Beatles, and, it, and then it was it. That was it. Yeah. yeah. And then you know, and I and I feel bad for my son now because this doesn't happen, but. When I was growing up, there were every every street had a, at least one band or a couple of bands. Yeah. So yeah. that was the best. Yeah. Um, and so uh, what I what I don't know, what I didn't see much of when I was trying to prepare for today was 
between you discovering the Beatles and your sessions in New York at Power Station and things like that, what what got you what got you there? That was uh, when I was growing up in. Well, still when I was living at home, uh, I was playing in a band with Obie O'Brien, who is still with works with us. Yeah, yeah. So, and he he turned seventy before me. He's about a half a year older than me. Yeah. And uh, a, a guy, guitar player named Lance Quinn, and uh, Lance was good pals with Tony Bon Jovi, who is John's cousin, yeah. and uh, J Tony Bon Jovi opened the power station yeah. and they were there at the beginning and so since I had to hook up with them yeah. I would go in and do sessions for different people and then uh, then I got the call to go in and yeah. play for play for John or play on Runaway yeah. with John and there was no band at that point it was right. he was getting players from different sessions in different rooms at the power station right. so Springsteen was in so we got Roy Bitten from Springsteen's band and John Waite was in doing an album and we got a drummer named Frankie LaRocca who has since passed he played on Runaway and Tim Pierce who's who's one of the top studio players yeah. in LA who I haven't seen since then uh -huh. uh, I would love to yeah. but that was the band for Runaway yeah uh, and so I would imagine a lot of those sessions were put together like that from like kind of an all-star band some yeah, of those things. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah, I, I don't know who. I'm sure he John did a lot of demos there. This was the only one that I did, yeah. and uh, you know, it was the one that counted. It, well. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, is was there any other uh, demos that you did that was similar like that, where you had to pull some some of those uh, players from these other bands that you can remember? That, no, that not that. No, usually any demos that I had done or any recording the 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 band was sort of lined up beforehand I see. they you know the producer or the uh, who's ever project that was right. would pick people how long was that span that you you worked at the power station that you did sessions well, I didn't just work at the power station I mean yeah. the uh, the Gladys Knight stuff was done at a studio called Bell Sound Studios which is long gone and uh, and you know a lot of the different I I think there were a few people that I recorded with at the power station, but mostly it was all over the place. Yeah. Have you been back to that area? Have you been back to any of those studios, including the power station? Well, the power station, yeah, we went back there to, uh, I'm trying to remember, if it wasn't for 2020, it was for the album before that, I think. Mm -hmm. But we, yeah, we went there and, and we did like a live a live thing for oh. I don't remember what it yeah. was for but it was interesting because we all walked in there and went oh yeah. wow is this bringing back memories so what I saw was uh, I guess they had changed names for a minute and then they brought it back for I think Berkeley has yeah 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 it was Avatar for a while it yeah. was yeah thank and God it's still there I hope yeah. it, I hope it doesn't go down the tubes like all the rest of them are well I know it's it's tough because everybody has a studio now yeah <laughs> yeah well a lot of the better studios or a lot of the bigger studios I, I shouldn't say necessarily better um, hook up have hookups with different universities or colleges I mean yeah instructional stuff that's yeah. pretty cool um, touring before uh, Bon Jovi uh, you did some stuff with Cher I did uh, the <laughs> a year uh, I think it was uh, 1990, and it was Hardest Stone tour. Yeah, very cool. It was fun. Um, uh, Mamas and Papas. Yeah, that's yeah. That well, Denny Doherty, who was the original singer, John Phillips, who was originally in the band, were the only two really yeah, left still from, from doing it. So they they Mama Cass had passed. Yeah. So they got a. They got a, a, a female singer named uh, from a band called Spanky and Our Gang. Yeah, she was like the perfect re replacement for for Cass. Oh, nice. And then uh, female wise, it was Mackenzie Phillips, John's daughter. Right. And so that was the band. Then that was a lot of fun. I bet it was. Um, I did a little bit of stuff with Shania Twain. Yeah, little tiny bit. Yeah, yeah. did a couple of TV shows and. Very cool. Um, Easy on the eyes. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Um, any other any other highlights that you or any other stories from those studio days that uh, you can think of that you might want to share? Uh, let me I, see. I think I remember you telling uh, talking about doing some stuff with Willie Nelson. I did Shotgun Willie. I did. Yeah, that's interesting because uh, I was working with a rhythm section of guys in New York that uh, got hired by a Reef Martin who the ultimate producer I mean he is since passed also but he did the Bee Gees when they the resurgence with them with Stan Alive and all yeah, that yeah, yeah. Aretha Franklin Donny Hathaway it was great it was uh, Willie was great his hair wasn't as long as it is now but he was stoned all the time and a sweet guy and when we got hired he didn't know or Reef, who put this, the sessions together, didn't realize that Willie brought his band everywhere. So they pull into New York to Atlantic Studios in their tour bus. Oh and so he's got two rhythm sections. So they just said, okay, well, you guys order lunch. You guys play this song. So they already had a, a, a set of musicians he already, waiting for Willie. Yeah, in yeah. His, okay. All the New, York, the New York guys, and yeah. he had his band. So we just... It wasn't even a prop. It wasn't like okay, you guys go home. It was okay. You record this one. Okay, you record this wow. one. You record. This. So it was. So that particular record ended up having two two bands. Shotgun Will. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was a huge record for him. Yeah, absolutely. Over the course of that time and even later, what do you what do you remember that you might have turned down? You know. I don't think I've ever turned down anything, but I have been a day late and a dollar short <laughs> on a few things. Missed out on some. Yeah, Farner, when they were looking, I really, I, I really wanted to get a uh, shot at that. Yeah. Hall and Oates, I didn't find out until the very end, uh, and Tommy Wolk got it, so he's yeah. an unbelievable and, and, bass player. Were those things that that would must have been like '80s or something like that before? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this uh, was all pre. Yeah. Bon Jovi. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about um, going into the Hall of Fame. So, do they do they give you a jacket? Do they give you a, a ring? What is <laughs> I should have brought the statuette out with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should carry that with me all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah the statuette, the the nice holding the record up. It's it's unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. It's got to be. Um, that was a big ceremony, and uh, I know that uh, John. Uh, Kind of had to vouch for you. He, he put in a word to make sure that you were included. Yeah, for years I since since I played on yeah all the albums except I played on Runaway from the first album. I didn't do any of Seventy Eight Hundred, and then from Slippery on. Yeah, and I always wondered since I wasn't considered a band member because he wasn't going to replace Alec. Yeah, uh, what would happen if it ever got to that point? Right. And, and he was cool. I mean, he s sent an email to the powers that be at the Hall of Fame, explained my situation, his reasoning for why he did it, how he did it, yeah. and uh, it was great. Right, it was right. yeah. And that was a, that was my Christmas present before the the Hall of Fame. The Christmas before, he had sent me that framed. Oh, nice. And. Uh, yeah, the it, letter that he yeah sent the them. email yeah it's very cool uh, and and how did you uh, how did you find out when it, what was the what, how did they, how did you get the news well I was playing in in Las Vegas in this show called Raiding the Rock Fault okay so a bunch of different players from yeah. different bands yeah, Howard Lee's from that. Heart yeah, yeah. is also in the Hall of Fame he was in there way before me so he he said to me one time that, that, uh, that well the day after. He texted me and said, uh, so th does your PP feel a little bigger now? <laughs> so, uh, so I was doing that show and one morning, Kelly, my wife called me up, hysterical. I thought somebody died and, and, it, was, and it was early for me. So I'm going, oh, oh is everybody all right? The kid's okay, Every, yeah, yeah. everybody's good. And she's going, you're in, you're in, you're in. I went, I'm in what? And she saw it online that somebody had posted they had changed the uh, the advertisement, which just had the four, yeah, and 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 added me into it. And she, she yeah, 
she was over the moon. Wow. Very cool. Uh, so tell me about the Raiding the Rock Ball. How long did you do that? A few years. And it was in Vegas? It was in Vegas at three, at, when I started doing it, it had been going for a little while at, uh, oh, what's the place that, uh, where Elvis it used uh, to be called the International, it was the LVH, Las Vegas Hilton. Okay. Started there, and then it went from there to the Tropicana, okay. and then it went from the Tropicana to the Hard Rock, and then when the Hard Rock was redone for Virgin, it became a Virgin Hotel, and uh, so now then I started stopped doing it and they started doing it again at a, at a smaller venue and then COVID yeah. stopped that so but it, it won best six years in a row best of Vegas wow so that's and it's an all-star band basically yeah it's, you know, yeah everybody that's real players and from yep. real bands and it's a, a, a fairly big bullpen too so it's great yeah. Dave Amato is an old friend of mine from Mario Speedwagon yeah. he was in and out of it Todd Kearns who plays plays bass and sings for uh, Slash. Okay. He's in and out of it. Uh, Jay Shellen, who plays with Yes. Um, you know, so it, it just goes on and on. It was a lot of fun. Is it, uh, it's not just a concert then, it's a, it's a production, it's a... It was, a, it was more of a production when I first started doing it. They had skits and everything else right. and then it was, it was cut down to 90 minutes of just music it was like a yeah. you know time capsule started off with uh, my generation by the who and went through all the different years you uh, also do a little bit of singing just some background yeah okay but I, I saw a thing where you were singing uh, walking the dog oh god <laughs> was, that, was that a regular thing no no that was a that was a Christmas show that we used to Bon Jovi did every year at the Count Basie Theater down in Red Bank, and okay. uh, this year everybody, f this particular one, everybody from the band had to sing a song. Get up and do something, so they don't make. That and it only happened then. Th 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 you don't make that a practice of getting up. Uh, no, just singing backgrounds. Uh, I want to ask you about some of these stories. Um, your uh, in two thousand nine, you ended up making a uh, guest performance with Poison. <laughs> Yeah, I'll keep it nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. We went to see Poison. It was Poison. Was, was it? Yeah, Def Leppard, Leppard and then Poison were in the middle, and uh, Cheap Trick opened. And so yeah. Kelly and myself and my son Jake went, and you know we stood on stage and watched, you know, uh, watched Cheap Trick, and Jake was on, was little at that point. He was yeah. loving it, and then when they finished. Walked off stage and and Jake and, and Kelly went to catering and we're sitting outside. It was a beautiful day, and I got stopped on the way there by Tom Peterson, and uh, I think it was uh, trying to remember who else stopped me. Well, basically they they said, uh, y you know who's not here. I said, uh, no, I don't know who's not here, and it was the bass player from Poison. Right. He hadn't made it it wasn't there yet or yeah. whatever you know yeah uh, you can hide in here if you want <laughs> you know hide in our dressing room yeah, yeah. and I, I thought they were joking around so I sat down and as I was telling Kelly and my son they were facing the buses my back were to the buses and Kelly's going they're looking over here they're looking they're they're come they're coming over here <laughs> so it was basically you know we get up and play. I know no poison songs. I would, I would hate to hear the board mix from that night, if I was in it at all. But I just said, sure. Wow. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. great. And it turned out, or at least as far as uh, Joe Elliott was concerned, I saved the day. They wow. would have had to cancel the the night, and yeah, yeah. so it was it was quite interesting. Did you have to do your hair up? Because yeah, I'm I didn't sure. have to do anything. I, was I, say, you, I wasn't dressed to perform. <laughs> I was gonna say you weren't dressed to perform. So you don't know if you had enough hair to be in that band at that time. No, I didn't <laughs> have a hat. Didn't have didn't have extra hair. No, wow. it was just. Uh, That's pretty serious. Yeah, that would have been a little over the top if they had said okay. Put this on. Yeah, put this that on. That would have been... And, no. uh, 
get some hairspray and let's work. Yeah, no, thank you, no. But they did almost blow me up because the offstage keyboardist who was going to yell the changes to me, who would play them first and then yell them to me, which I thought was pretty funny because that's, you know, uh, he was motioning me and I thought he wanted me to move back because he wanted to get some eye contact with whoever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I moved back and then they set off some pyro and it almost blew me up. I could feel the heat coming up my back yeah. and everybody from the other bands, everybody from Cheap Trick, everybody from, from uh, Def Leppard were standing on the side of the stage dying. They were laughing their asses off. Well, they all knew it was coming and you didn't. They might have. I didn't, uh, yeah. Your, you mentioned your son. Your son is a talented guy. He's got his own band. Got his own band. Got his a, a record done. Uh, is is six eight six nine. Wow. Uh, Jake J and Jake the Killjoys. J and the Killjoys. And uh, they also uh, got a chance to open up for Bon Jovi. Yeah, yeah, twice. Okay. And it w and it was interesting because it wasn't honest to God, folks. It wasn't nepotism because <laughs> I don't have that kind of pull. <laughs> so they yeah every every town that we were playing in at that particular those tours they would they would have uh, the local radio station or whatever would have like a battle of the bands or contests and they would send their stuff in and these two particular ones I mean one in Salt Lake City and, and also here in Nashville wow. and he got up there and like not not a nervous bone in his body wow it was uh, it was unbelievable That's to see awesome. Yeah, very cool. Twenty thousand people, and the kid gets up there and he kills it. Proud moment. Oh, extremely. Yeah. So a lot of home life, and um, you have uh, you have your share of animals, and have had share of animals. Yeah, four dogs now, two littles, a chihuini, which is a chihuahua wiener dog, yeah, yeah. a chorky, a chihuahua yorkie. Wow. Uh, a German shepherd who was absolutely my baby she's perfect yeah and uh a german wire hair that has some uh blue healer in her and she's nuts wow she's out of her mind yeah. so yeah yeah and not to be not not to go along with no. the dogs but the best thing is i'm a grandpa oh nice so wow. yeah so Bo reynolds okay baby Bo. How old now? I guess, I guess she's eight months, seven right. months. Yeah. I, I'm prob probably wrong with that. I have no, I have no Your gauge time, on yeah. eight. Yeah, there's no gauge. Uh, and you get to spend a lot of time. Not as much as I would like. They come and see me, but but yeah. Grandma, Gaga, she gets to go there. She she goes and watches the baby because uh, my daughter is. A lawyer and her Where husband. Are they? They're in uh, Savannah, Tennessee. Oh, okay. So, a two and a half hour drive. Yeah. So, th yeah. grandma gets up at like five in the morning and drives down there to be there at nine o'clock when wow. my daughter has to go to work and she gets, uh, she's there now, as a matter of fact. Oh, it's, very cool. I get the FaceTime. There you go. Well, that's awesome. That's uh, that, that between the dogs and the you know, grandchild, holy moly. Yeah, it's, yeah, and she loves the puppies. I th you were in uh, Utah for a while. Yeah, 11 years. And you had, uh, did you have horses? Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're <laughs> Morgan's horses, my oh, daughter. Okay. So, yeah, we had them for a while, and then they got got moved elsewhere. That's not an easy task, so, I mean. It, uh, oh, no, I used to go down dead of winter and shovel out the stables oh, and man. it was a great it was cool for somebody from Philadelphia that never you know I'm, I married into to a horse family right since since my wife is uh -huh. she was uh, she, she taught riding she yeah. you know wow barrel yeah. road the barrel races did the whole nine yards and my daughter was Miss Rodeo Tennessee Oh wow! So, Unbelievable. Well, yeah. Let's, let's let's get back to the Philly thing. So when you go up to the Northeast, what do you gotta have? What do you gotta you have to eat? I mean, so where I grew up outside of yeah. Philadelphia. I mean, yeah. if I would go to Philadelphia, it was because we were doing a concert there. Yeah. Uh, but uh, 
Jersey and New York? Food-wise, Jersey-wise, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I would say the um, pork roll, ham, and cheese, an oh. egg. Okay. Sandwich. Okay. Pork roll, ham, cheese, and egg. Yeah. That's the killer. Okay. The, there's a place in Rumson, New Jersey that has the best. Uh, Burger-wise, there's a place down in the downtown New York, uh, down in, in oh God, what is the area called? It's almost like what used to be the dock area. It's the oldest bar in New York called the the Ear Inn, and unbelievable burgers. Wow. Walkable from the hotel, so nice. that was that's why that was good. All the all the dives and stuff like that when you were in sessions and things like that was there a lot of uh, a lot of that stuff when you order in into the studio or when you run down the street and those sort of things the best places were the dives. I no no <laughs> no I didn't find the best places were the dives. Usually the food was pretty good. I mean they you know they would I never really had a say in the matter. They would ask what do you want? We're ordering from here. Here's the thing. It would be a book. As thick as the Bible with with menus with menus yeah, yeah. very cool uh, and and what about here now in Nashville have you had a chance to sample the southern cooking yes I have and uh, it's great not as much as I would like to yeah. you know uh, with, with what's now, going on now yeah yeah it's not going to happen but it's uh, it, it, here in Tennessee you don't uh, like diets are kind of out the window because it's, oh it's, yeah it's all comfort food that's that's <laughs> well, I'm comfortable with that yeah exactly and and where did you generally did like when you were uh, recording and stuff like that where generally where you got calls for uh, road gigs and things like that you know I th there weren't that many road gigs I mean I've been doing this so long, Bon Jovi so long, that yeah. th there were, th yeah, I mean, the Mamas and Papas lasted, you know, a year or so, maybe two, yeah. on and off. They would be extended weekend tours. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Cher was a year, and that was, you know, uh, arenas and then, you know, some outside stuff. Yeah. Um, other than that, I, I worked with a guy named Steve Forbert. Uh, who had a song called Romeo's Tune that was a big hit uh, and I did a tour toured with him a little bit too very cool um, so then uh, when you oh and one other okay guitar player named David Bromberg had a David Bromberg band I did that for eight years that was the best bar none musical experience and musical schooling I've ever had because yeah. the band played I mean everything everything from Irish fiddle tunes to 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 uh, wow sort of R&B to to country to bluegrass to I mean it had diverse fiddle players mandolin players I had a, one guy that was a keyboard player with us at one point played tuba uh, <laughs> it was great it was Unbelievable. It, that was really cool um so then uh, going out with Bon Jovi, that must have been an, an escalation in production, escalation in... Uh, Travel, an escalation yeah. in everything, yeah. It was... Uh, and then uh, Live from London was one of the one of the first, close to the first shows you did? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, that was... Uh, yeah. That's thinking back on it, I'm thinking to myself, I should have been really scared. <laughs> and it, it, I don't remember being particularly freaked. Uh, but when I see the the DVD of it or any yeah. shots from it where they show it yeah. en masse, yeah, yeah, it's like wow. That, from that perspective, it's from uh, that it's perspective, it's nuts. Uh, was there uh, was there any time in, in that first uh, outing with with Bon Jovi? Was there any other massive? Was it was was there any times that you ever went wow? This is. Uh, that was one of them. That was one, yeah. Another one was, uh, oh, I, I, you know, it's it's like, it never gets to the point of where I go, oh, shit, yeah, this again, yeah, yeah, all these people, <laughs> leave me alone. Yeah. No, it's 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 every gig has been uh, eye opening in in one way or another. You played with some. Some some serious players that are still playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, another thing I would say, Alice Cooper. Okay. Doing the two albums with him. 
with two different producers so that was that was interesting um, one of them was uh, a guy that that had produced or co-produced with John and Richie the These Days record and uh, and he ended up doing this Alice record and it, it was great and uh, also uh, the album the Alice album with Poison on it uh, that was like a breakthrough for him oh yeah and what a the sweetest guy the greatest guy ever yeah Alice I, except I made the mistake because I I didn't know him I called him Al once and he went don't ever call me Al it's really? Alice and he didn't say it nasty he yeah. said it sort of funny yeah but no, it was like okay and he's been like he's been like a godfather to to my kids because he just they go see him and uh, oh. they you know a lot of times I can't go so Kelly will take Jake and, and uh, they, they just roll out the red carpet for them oh, very cool uh, I was going to say Desmond Child produced that he record? produced that yeah. one yeah he did a lot of the Bon Jovi stuff yeah, yeah. well n writing Okay. Did, did, did a lot of writing. Never produced any of the oh, okay. Bon Jovi stuff, but. All right. Um, what about Ringo Starr? Ringo was. <laughs> that was another thing with Reef Martin, who the producer I was talking about. He was, he was doing this album with Ringo, Ringo the Fourth, I think it was called, and uh, for some reason, Tony Levin was playing on it, and for some reason he couldn't finish two songs or he couldn't come in for two more two songs so I got called along with this guy David Bromberg who I was playing with and I was living in Boston at the time so I took the Eastern shuttle yeah and and my girlfriend at the time said oh you should got to take a camera with you and I didn't like a dumb idiot <laughs> so it was that was yeah. mind-blowing yeah um, Gladys Knight I never you know we did half of the Imagination album and then part of another album the, I think the album after that and never saw them we would go in and record the the songs and if and if the producers weren't sure of the key we would record, record it in a couple of different keys okay. and then they would send it off to oh, wherever wow. they were and they put their vocals on and yeah. then they then they'd get the guy come in and do the string arrangements and horn arrangements so it was it was yeah. pretty loose i remember doing one of the songs at, laying on my back in the studio i mean it wasn't it was like this particular group of players we played together so much and the, the, these two producers yeah. you know as long as they were getting what they needed they uh, it was okay, fine. And then I heard that Jamerson played a song laying on his back in the studio. Except I think he was shit faced, <laughs> and still could play circles around me. So oh no, and Michael Bolton, you do some, uh, some Michael nice. Bolton. I did a song called "How Can We Be Lovers If We Can't Be Friends," and that was through Desmond because he co-wrote that with him and yeah. and he produced it. I remember that one. Some of the other artists that came through there that you uh, Phoebe Snow. Okay. Was one, and I did her first album. Looks like was it just, just called Phoebe Snow? Yeah, yeah. It had Poetry Man on it and stuff. Except Poetry Man was upright, and that that wasn't me. Oh. But um, and another one of her albums I played on a couple of songs. We're in uh, Lower Broadway here, which is. Uh, yep, we are. Normally, hustling and bustling. Not today. Uh, oh, did we go down second? Uh, we I wonder what that looks like now. Oh, I know. I don't think you can. I think it's uh, like wow. everything on that side is blocked off. And there it is. Yeah. Bridgestone There's, Arena. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Jake, my son, knows the. Uh, he plays down here on Broadway, or he did. Yeah. And there's one place that he plays that. You can see Bridgestone out the front, and he says, "You know, I know the feeling now of, you know, playing a place like that, and then, you know, playing you go back place. and play in a small place." I said, "You better get used to that feeling because it's never going to end. Yeah. If you want to, if if you think of yourself as a well-rounded musician, even if you get to that point where you're playing, you know, right. huge places, yeah. always, if you have the chance." Oh you know, yeah, play. Oh, Just yeah. play, play Doesn't with as matter. many people as you can, and that's the one thing that I'm I'm sort of bummed about because I, I have a lot of people here that I know I'm not super friendly with, and I'm mostly friendly with the, 
the top bass players here, which isn't going to get me any work. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah I've, I've it's been too bad that I, I haven't yeah. really you could be been out. able to get out and play. Let's talk about those instruments. Okay, Let's talk about the instruments that you like to use, or what do you, what your go tos are, and some the, of the interesting. Okay, the go tos. Roger Sadowski basses. Okay. And these company called South Korean company called Mulan, M O L L O N. Okay. And this guy by himself makes the basses and the guitars everything but the strings. Wow. Cuts the bodies, cuts the necks, winds the pickups. He's a meddlergist, so he he melted then he has I guess he has a pretty amazing collection of, of early 60s and late 50 Fender basses yeah. melded down some tuners from that era to see the zinc content and this that and the other thing had those made for him wow or he made them I don't even know yeah. but it, it impressed me enough to where they sent me one I loved it and now <laughs> I have too many of them now yeah. But they're they're great, you know. And then the usual stuff for studio Hofners, like Beetle basses okay. and, and hollow body basses. But I've, I've got a lot of four strings that I wish I could use, but I've painted myself into a corner. At least with Bon Jovi, Five strings. I don't see. Yeah, I don't see switching out. You know, everybody in the everybody, the other guitar players are constantly sw every song switching guitars. Yeah. And it got to the point of where I, <laughs> I said to. Uh, I said to John Shanks' tech, you know, when you bring him <laughs> up, could you bring, just, there's, don't even have to bring me one, just come up, after you give him his guitar, come by me, I'll hand you my bass, I'll turn around in the circle, and you hand me the same bass back, and at least then I'll feel like I'm feel part like of things. doing something, yeah. Yeah. I did that once. It, it, <laughs> it, it wasn't it wasn't as funny as I thought it would be, but to me it was. It was a, it was a giggle well, absolutely, moment. Absolutely, but it's true. I mean, uh, at this point, uh, on that kind of a production, guitar players are switching yeah. almost every song. Yeah, and, and so I just yeah, and they would have to come up the way the stage was set up. It was John's <laughs> facing the audience. John and I, Richie used to be over to his right. Yeah, and now Phil X is over. Yeah. over to his left where I used to stand and Shanks is next to, to John and then I'm over here right. and then there's steps that come up and they gotta get by me so I always have to remember to go forward go back I'll feel a hand on my back in the dark yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like I just I, I've you know the front of house has enough trouble if they have to keep yeah. dealing with different bases yeah. not gonna be well, that's awesome that's awesome to be able to do that um you mentioned uh, you mentioned um, Richie, uh, so he was he's been out of the band. Was uh, when you did the uh, uh, Hall of Fame gig, he played. Was yeah. he already? Was he still in the band at that time? No. Okay, so he came back. No. And he, he also had Alec play in the band. Al was band. there. Al came up and yeah. and you know yeah it was at that. That was the that that was exciting to me to see Al because I hadn't seen him in so long, yeah. and I. You know, it's it was great. it was great to see him, and it was funny because everybody was up there. I mean, Richie, Alec, yeah. Shanks, uh, uh, Phil X. Uh -huh. it, it was a lot of people on that stage, and I heard they were interviewing. F Phil was sitting next to me, and they were doing some interviews, and they asked him what it felt like to be on stage, and he went, "Crowded." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, that was a pretty significant, um, of course they all are, uh, that day they also honored the Cars, Dire Straits, Moody Blues, Nina Simone, and Rosetta Tharp. Yeah, I felt, I, I felt bad that, uh, that Knopfler didn't yeah. go, didn't send any, inch, didn't, nothing. Yeah. It was, it, we were really looking forward to oh, seeing them sure. play. Uh, and it was great th to see the Cars sounded amazing and, oh. and, and. and you know, I've, you know, another one gone. Now. Yeah, exactly. Who were some of the people that you, uh, besides the Beatles, coming up, that uh, you were, that <sighs> that you? Uh, well, the usual, the Beatles, the Stones, all the yeah. British Invasion ones. Yeah. Lots of horn bands. I love 
I, I played in a horn band for a while, and so uh, between Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Chicago, the there were a couple. Of, there was another horn band that, believe it or not, called Ambergris, which is well puke. That's what they used to make to make. Uh, 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 oh, what the hell is it? It's uh, perfume. Okay. They used it to make perfume. And uh, there was another band called Chase, which was all trumpets. The, 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 one of the trumpet players' yeah. names, you know. And uh, a Lighthouse. I mean, all that. Yeah. Boy, playing that stuff with, with three or four horns kicking in. It's like. Oh yeah. There's nothing. Oh, that's awesome. Nothing gets you better than that. Absolutely. Um, did you ever do anything uh, like uh, any of the like Zydeco or New Orleans type? Actually, I did. Yeah, I played in a in a in a band in New York City called Loop Guru Zydeco, and the main guy who played all oh the, yeah the scratchboard the scratchboard and did the singing washboard. Uh, yeah, he that was great. And as a matter of fact, the drummer that was in that band has been playing for Bob Dylan for a while now. And I ran into him at JFK in the lounge one time when we were both just about to go out on the road. And I hadn't seen him and it had to be tw 20 years. Oh, my God. Well, uh, <laughs> listeners and viewers, uh, you can uh, find him uh, in the Bon Jovi uh, archives. And uh, we want to thank you so much for doing this with us, Hugh. You're welcome. Beautiful day today. Thanks for riding with us. Oh, it's great. Thanks, I could go all day. Let's stop, let's stop the liquor store. Get Thank some you. edibles. Come on, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, please give us a thumbs up, and we welcome your comments. Check out more of the Road Dog Project here on YouTube, and follow on Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. Come on, Leon. Come on, Leon.